Today I have three rustic farmhouse DIYs. They are plaid. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, number one is going to be the snowflake sign. I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I got on clearance. Well, it's not ribbon, it's actually like a rope. And I think I got it from Walmart. And this is a ornament from Dollar Tree. Very pretty snowflake. Then we have this wallpaper, these little like panels of wallpaper that come from Dollar Tree and they're like a peel and stick, real easy to use. And this is a sign that I'm repurposing that I made for fall last year. It's just two pieces of um, the long signs glued together on the back with popsicle sticks. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn these in the way that I would like for them to be on the sign. And I'm going to line them up here and then just use my rotary blade and cut them off on the bottom. It did slide and my husband was talking to me. I got a little distracted and I cut too much. But that's not going to be a problem because I have trim for this, so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now I'm just going to peel off that first little panel like the directions say on the back. I'm lining it up on the side. Just going to hold it down and then get ready to grab the next piece. And before I press it down, I'm going to grab my long wooden ruler and just press it flat as I pull the backing away. If you do it like this, you won't have the bubbles and things like that. It'll just lay completely down and there won't be a chance for any air to escape, get bubbly in there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to peel the little strip off first, line it up, press my ruler down, peel that up, and then press it out as I am peeling it. I'm just going to lay it right over the top instead of cutting it off. I had a little excess where I got out of line here, so I'm just going to use this little blade and cut that off. Okay, and it looks good so far. You see where I've got that extra little gap up there on the top? It'll be covered though. All right, so since I did that, I've decided to add a piece of rope here and use my other, my little white trim also. I'm just going to use my glue gun and protecting my fingers. I'm going to go not on the edge, but rather close to the edge, just kind of allowing for the width of that rope and I'm going to press it down into the edge of the board and I do cut that tape off later by the way I don't think I have that recorded but there's some tape on the end of the rope it just keeps it from fraying but I do take that off once it's glued down so it will look better all right and I'm gonna go all the way to the corner now I'm using a clip to hold that corner there and it's rather difficult with a thicker rope to make a tight square corner but um and so it kind of curves a little bit it doesn't bother me if it bothers you you might want to try like a thinner rope or a jute or something like that um but there is a solution for that because you can kind of see the edge of the board underneath it behind the rope you see there before i clamped it but i'm going to fix that don't worry same process here. I'm just going to start in the corner and I'm going to go around. And this time I'm just going to put the bead of glue right next to that rope and on the board. And that way we don't have any squishing out and making a mess. We're just going to continue around all the way on the inside. And this gives it a little bit, bit of an extra layered look. And I like it. I think that it the colors of the ropes together they kind of reflect what's going on in the snowflake, so I think they look good together. But you can tell me what you think. Okay, so I'm going to go around and around and around, just like that, until we get back in the corner. Now when we get in the corner, you can take your scissors, kind of cut it a slant, and then put some glue inside of the pieces of rope that's still there. And then you can just press it down and it won't come unraveled. 
Okay, so you see the corner here? I'm going to take my little bull nose pliers, for those who are asking, that's what they're called, and just cut the corners off of each corner. All right, so with the snowflake, I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep that ribbon on there or not, and I just decided to take it off. It needs a little bit of help. There's a little bit of issue here. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on the back. I'm going to cover up the hole that's in the front. I'm just kind of scratching it down with my fingernail so it won't come off. I'm going to take some of this lightweight spackling and just go right down in that little hole to help cover it up. It's not completely camouf camouflaged now, but it's better. And just using the back of my rubber spatula as a scraper, I just take the excess right off. If you don't put the tape on the back, it'll just squish right out the back. So I noticed that the Believe Word was not centered and it was kind of driving me nuts a little. So very, very carefully, I just popped it right off of there. Look at that. Now I'm just kind of measuring to see where is going to be the center. So I can get my snowflake relatively in the center of this sign. I'm just using a pen. Um, that was the closest thing. I do find a pencil later, but pen is what I had. So now I have a little guide. And I can place this back down right in the correct spots. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Looking for my little guidelines and just popping it back down. Just pressing it and I'm just taking a little time to remove little extra spider webs and stuff off of it from the, the glue, you know, the glue webs. I'm just pressing it down really well. Now, since I want to try to make this a little bit straighter, I'm just taking my ruler and then a pencil, marking it. And under that B2, so that it goes right back where it needs to go. A little fancy glue work there. And then I'm going to flip it back over, line it up with those little marks I made, and then press it down as well. I like how they did this piece. So, you know, thumbs up for Dollar Tree because that, that little piece of the metal sign has like a little rusty tarnish on it and it looks really good. I think they have these in a smaller too, but I like the big one for this. Okay, so I have these little ornaments, which I also think came from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not certain because I took, took the packaging off of it. And I was trying to think of how I would want these to go on my sign, but I decided that I wanted them kind of centered on the sides of Believe. So, and they're puffy, like the little pillows, kind of stuffed. So I'm trying to hold them down so that they will glue down straight instead of trying to roll off to the side. Kind of making sure that they're where they're supposed to be. And then once the glue is dried, this is how it looks. And then I'm just gonna use a simple hanger on the back. What do you think about this one? Alrighty, so now we're going to go to the gnome wreath. Here's a little gnome pick that came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to just pop him right off of there. It's pretty easy to do. Just be careful that you don't break them. They, sometimes they, they'll try to tear and break. This is a, I think this came from Dollar Tree. Yes, I believe it did. It's an 18 inch wreath form and it's got the little tinsel stuff on it. I'm going to use my rotary cutter, my rotary mat. I'm going to use a variety of ribbons and I do add a burlap ribbon to that too. And then I'm going to use a little bit of these rolls of deco mesh. Now these are just pieces that I had left and I'm going to be cutting these into strips. I'm going to use, I'm going to cut 14 pieces of the black and white and I'm going to cut seven pieces of the red. We're going to make, now I'm confusing myself, <laughs> we're going to make seven bundles, two of the check and one of the red. So they'll look like this, and I'll show you how we do that. I use my little clips to hold them for me so I can get a lot done at once. I'm just going to roll these on the mat, just simple, 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 rolling it up. And then I'm going to put the clamp on it, put it to the side, going to get the red one that's going to go in the middle, roll it up next. 
I mean, I'm trying to make sure that the ravelly pieces go downward. So that's what I'm looking at there to make sure that the edge is to the back. I don't want that rough edge in the front. So if they're all pointed down, then when I place them down on the wreath, those little raggedy edges will be hidden by the wreath. So one more time. Here we go. If you are interested in this type of crafting and you like what I do here on my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. We are over 7,000 now and it is just the best community of like-minded crafters and sweet people. And um, the support is just amazing. I'd love to have you as part of our family. Now for the sad little wreath. It was kind of squished like an egg and I had to fix it. I had to just bend that flimsy wire and now I'm just kind of lifting up to see what I've, I've never used this type of wreath from Dollar Tree so I've, I kind of wanted to see what we had going on. If you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee. You can see the link in the description box below. So there are pieces on here that mm, it's just flimsy to be honest but it's perfect for, for this. It is perfect for like a mesh wreath for me I think because I didn't need a bunch of greenery and it's really sparse on here and there was a gap on one section but I fixed it with a zip tie. Okay so this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take two little pieces of, ten, of the little garland I guess you could call it and they're side by side and we're just going to tuck that bundle down in it and wrap the little branches around it. We're gonna do the same thing here I didn't have to count. I just went down about the same. You can see here what I've done. So that the ends are almost touching. They're kind of over like end to end maybe I guess you could say once you get them placed down. I'm sorry I can't be more specific with that but I did not count these. Um, but you can see what I'm doing here so that you don't have any big gaps between them. You want them to just touch. And then once you get all seven of those on there this is how it looks and I think it looks pretty good as is right pretty good so now we're going to start with our ribbons um, the green and the red and the burlap that you will see are wired and this other one with the holly is not wired three of the ribbons I use came from Dollar Tree and the red one is one I got at the thrift store but I'm going to cut these in eight inch pieces just like that and then once you get your pieces, you can see here that the green bundle, I had three and I have four of the beige, like the burlap, beige burlap one. And then you're going to just go through and with each one of them, go ahead and dovetail all of your ends. This is just going to give it a prettier appearance. There you go. That's how you dovetail if you didn't know. And then I'm going to decide how I want to put my ribbons down and I know that I want that pretty pattern on top. So I'm just going to cross it over in an X and then put this one right down the center. I'm going to squeeze the sides and press them toward each other just like that. Just walking your fingers toward each other. I hold it with my thumb and my fingers of the other hand. Then you're going to go down to whichever bundle you want to start on. Untwist it, holding everything down. Press it in tightly and then twist your little branches right around it. I think a good part of this wreath, um, one of the better points for it, is that you're not going to have to cut anything off when you're done. There will be no more wires or anything that you have to remove or try to cover up wires because it's already in greenery so it looks great. Okay, so the first one we put down was one with the green, and this is one with the beige. So we're going to alternate. There were seven, so we're going to do green, beige, green, beige, like that. Right on the top of each little bundle. And I'm just kind of playing around with it as I go. And you're going to continue around with your pattern. When we get to the end, and there we are. And it's a good possibility. I have two of the same one side by side. You know, it, it's a good possibility. As a matter of fact, now editing the video, I can clearly see that that's what I did. But that's okay. I don't even I don't mind. I'm not mad about it at all. 
All right, so you want to go through here and touch every single piece of that ribbon, every bit of it. You want to make sure nothing is at a weird, wonky angle. You want to make sure everything is uncurled, unfurled, puffed up, pressed out, whatever you want to call it. And it's a gorgeous wreath right now by itself, right? It looks really nice right how is it, uh, what it is, but we're going to add to it with our little gnome. I'm going to take my little sticker off the back. We don't want him to be looking like mini pearl in there. And then I'm going to use two pipe cleaners. These are long. I'm not going to cut them down. Going to use some hot glue. Press it down in there. Kind of roll it around a bit so it's covered up. And then just a piece of paper on top. And that'll hold it. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Press it in there. And then I'm going to take my piece of paper. Press right down on there. Once the glue is dried, we're going to go ahead and apply him down. I'm going to use the, I'm just going to kind of go in between my bundle so that I'm not squishing anything that's pretty. And I'm going to go down to the wire base and wrap it around. Simple, simple. He's kind of centered. Just, you know, kind of wanted to get an idea of where he was at so that he's centered and not looking silly. I don't want him off to the side. And then you can see here, I'm just working through and in between. And then you can either cut that off if you want, or just tuck it down in there and it'll be hidden. It'll be fine. And then you have kind of two options with the look. Um, right here, I'm showing you how it looks. If you overlap your little ribbon tails on top of him, he looks kind of sunken back or, you know, like he's kind of hidden in there. Or, like I'm doing now, I'm showing you that you can do it by poking the little tails behind him so that he really takes center stage and he's standing out in the front. So it's whichever you want, whichever way that you like it the best, you know. If you want the wreath to get more of the attention or the gnome, totally up to you. All right, so we're going to add some frosted greenery in. And I believe that's Dollar Tree. Really, really pretty greenery this year. And his beard is frosty, and his the little ball in his hat is frosty. So I thought a little frosted uh, greenery here would be pretty. And I'm just going to put these in here and there, all over, wherever it looks good. You can see me kind of moving it around a little bit. I'm trying to make sure that the end is actually sitting against something so it won't fall out so I want to make sure that it is like tucked into something so the glue has something to harden against and it has something to hold on to that's what I'm doing here a little bit more and I just decided I did not like this tree so you know what I'm gonna take it off I'm just using this little spatula here that I use on so many things. It's all dented and scratched. You can see my face in there. And I'm just carefully going through so that I don't tear too much paper. And I do have a little boo-boo, but that's okay. Again, we're going to fix that. If I got upset every time I made a mistake, I would never craft. And I'm just being honest with you. I wouldn't. Because I have lots of boo-boos. All right, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and this little brush, this little flat brush. And I'm just going to go around, kind of go around his little fingers here on his hands. I do this, uh, I do the little outline part, the little extra where you can see the green trim. I do that with a fine brush and then I give it two coats of paint and dry nice in between. And then this, I just give one thick coat of paint and put it in front of the fan so that it will dry. You can go back over this with some glitter if you want and it would probably just completely disappear. Um, but I wasn't worried about that because I knew I'd be covering it up. The bulk of it would be covered. So I have this little berry pick. And you can get something like this at Dollar Tree or really anywhere off of any greenery. And another one of these pieces of greenery that I've just kind of cut down to look a little bit more like the shape of a tree. And I want this to go right on top of it. So I want it to look like almost like he's holding a little greenery bundle of his own. So I'm just going to put this right on top of it. And let that glue set up. Careful, careful with your fingers. And this is how it looks. 
and we're going to add a little bit on the bottom of rope so that it looks nice and finished. Just a dot of hot glue to hold that on there while we wrap it around, cut off the rest, and then a little glue in the end so that it won't fall apart on you. And that'll hold that little bundle together. And I think that looks so much better for our little woodland gnome. What do you think? So here are his little hands finished. I just left the white piece so it would help cover up the where I tore it before. So you'll still see a little bit of it, but it, I think it looks all right. Okay, and so we're going to add some glue on the back of that piece and place it down right in his little hands. Now he's got a beautiful piece of greenery. Our little lumberjack gnome. Do you like him? Are you going to do this? I hope so. Now you can just hang this up with a little piece of wire or something on the back. You could just hang it right off of the form actually. Yeah, why number three is the Joy Breadboard. All right, so I have some of my antiquing wax. I have another one of these little metal signs. This is a little breadboard that I thrifted and sanded just a touch. Just use my little foam sander. It is about a, looks like about a nine and a half by a maybe four and a half, four and a quarter. And then a little tiny wreath. This is the ribbon that I was thinking about using from the other project and then a little bit of greenery so I'm just going to use a wet wipe here I'm going to get a little bit of that antiquing wax and place down on there going to rub it in just a bit kind of blot it and then start blotting that on to the sign I want to make it look a little more aged because if you remember the snowflake in the beginning it was aged so I want to give it kind of a matching look and you can do this by just kind of layering it on and that's what I did. I added a little bit lighter and then a little bit more until I got the look that I wanted. And then it's important to let that dry completely. You can see it's just a little bit of tarnish on there. While it is drying by the fan, I am going to fix up my wreath here. I want my wreath. This is just a little piece of, I think it was muscadine vine. I picked this out of the yard a couple of years ago. I made a large wreath and then I made a couple of little ones. And I'm just going to wrap a piece of that same pick that we've been using, working from that same piece, really stretching our dollar. And I'm just going to use a little bit of floral wire. I'm trying to get next to the inside of it. I'm sorry that I'm a little out of frame. I was really focusing on what I was doing. And you're just going to wrap that around. Then I'm going to cut off some of these berries really carefully. I don't want any that look white because I'm not going to frost this. It's going to be... I want my red berries, deep red berries. So I'm only going to put them on the side where the greenery is. And I'm going to leave them in little bundles. And that's all we'll be putting on that little wreath. That's it. So I thought, okay, well, I could use this bow, and I even cut dovetails in it, thinking that I might would use it, but I just, I don't know. I keep thinking about it, and, but I just can't do it. So I'm going to use this Dollar Tree ribbon. I'll tell you about this Dollar Tree ribbon. It's very pretty. It's nice, but it frays terribly. When I, You can see already the frays in the edges of it. When I'm tying my bows, it just comes apart. It'll stay bow will stay together but all of the edges just start fraying off so I had to go through there and pick those off trim that off of there uh, and I did trim my tails just a slant you just look at that look at that stuff all over the place you know it's a good thing I like rustic it didn't bother me so much but you know I still had to work on it a little so one more little simple bow just like that to go on top trim trim then I'm going to glue down my joy. It's all dry. Y'all know joy. You know I love that word. Something we should strive for every single day in everything we do. You gotta have joy. Happiness comes from within, and it, you know, it's something that nobody can give you. No. 
Okay, so then you place this down here, here, and wherever else you want to put it so that it will stay. And then press it down and hold it for a while so that it won't pop up. Because mine was not flat on the back. Then just decide where you want your little bow to be. And I just kind of tucked it behind there. And with a little bit of glue, that'll hold it in place. Now, I wanted a hanger in my breadboard, so I'm just going to take another piece of jute and just loop it over and then tie one knot and slide that knot close to the end. And then take the loop, press it through that hole, which I was happy to see that it actually fit, and then press the knot through the loop and pull it. And there you go. There it is. What do you think? Not bad, huh? I'm still not completely sure how I'm going to be doing my house this year. As far as rustic and farmhouse go, I know that I want to use a lot of red, white, beige, and green. But I'm not completely sure where I'm going to stop. There's so much, so many good things to make, and, and there's so much inspiration everywhere that I just am having a hard time deciding what I want to do. What are you doing in your house? You know, are you doing farmhouse or rustic or glam or modern? I'd love to know um, how other people are doing their trees and their homes this year. Will you be using any of the items that I have made in your house? Have you made anything so far that I've made? I'd love to see it. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.